Amen. Well, good morning. It is good to see you today, and it's good to come to worship, and we're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, it's not going to be long before Christmas is here. It's been the quickest year, hasn't it? The older you get, the quicker it gets. Every year. But it's a good time of the year. It's a good time where we can come together and fellowship and just remember the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we want to welcome you this morning. Thank you for coming and being a part of our service today. Uh, I've got some announcements, but I'm going to do those at the end. So, uh, Benny, if you will come lead us in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for life, and we thank Thee for allowing us to come to Thy house and worship Thee. And we thank Thee for all the many blessings that You have bestowed upon each of us as individuals and also as a church. We thank You so much, and we ask for forgiveness for taking things for granted, which we often do. We thank You for this lovely day, for the season that we've been through. And we thank you for everything that you've done for us. And we know that you will continue to be there because you promised. We love you. We pray for our church this morning as we go into the service to worship thee, to praise thee for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Be with us as a church. Help us grow. Help us do the things that you would have us do. And make, help us make the right decisions from day to day. Go with us now, God, and direct us, and may everything that is said and every song that is sung, every thought that passes through your mind will be about thee and what we can do to be better Christians. We pray now that you would continue to be with us, God, and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At this time, Vicki Moss is going to come and bring our Lighty Moon emphasis for December, so... Good morning. Good morning. Today makes the beginning of the Lottie Moon Christmas offering as well as the um, International Week of Prayer. Um, need it be said why the week before Christmas is chosen? Is not the festive season when families and friends exchange gifts in memory of the gift laid on the altar of the world for redemption of the human race? The most appropriate time to consecrate the portion from abounding riches and scant poverty to send forth the good tidings of great joy unto all the earth. But why is the Christmas offering named for Lottie? While living in China, Lottie wrote letters to the Foreign Mission Board, which is now the International Mission Board, and to the Baptist women. She asked for more missionaries and for money to grow her work among the Chinese. But because of Lottie's determination, the WMU collected a Christmas offering to give to the Foreign Mission Board. In 1918, at Annie Armstrong's suggestion, the WMU named the offering the Lottie Moon. Today, we still give to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering in honor of her work and the sacrifice to keep our missionaries on the field. With this being the week of international missions is a special focus, focused time for prayer for Southern Baptist missionaries serving through the international board and the people whom they serve. We invite you to join us in this season of prayer from November the 28th to December the 5th. In addition to prayer, your generosity in giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering can make an internal impact. When you give directly to this offering, 100% of your gifts support missionaries around the world. The goal for Vandola for this year is $2,500. And there's the Lottie Moon vision for this year. 
After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all the tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Revelation 7, 9 through 10. So you have in your bulletin this week uh, your offering envelope and um, pamphlet about the week of prayer for the missionaries. Um, you'll be seeing a short video here on about day three um, that's in your pamphlet. And um, remember, next Sunday there'll be two offerings, uh, so be sure you don't get confused from your regular offering and your lighting main offering. So thank you. I live in a country in East Asia with three million people. Um, many of those are nomadic herdsmen who still live in a vast wilderness where the gospel has never been able to penetrate. And they live in a structure called a gare. It's a large round felt tent that they can pick up and move. Many of these families move you know, up to 11 times in a year and just pack everything up and and put it on a camel and we'll move across the country. It is a passion of mine to be able to take the gospel to those who never had the opportunity to hear the name of Christ. How we do that is we, through national believers, we're able to meet physical needs and in ways that shows the love of Christ. Whether it's by replacing a gear that's been burned down, um, giving coal in the wintertime whenever it's negative 40 degrees outside um, and they have nothing to heat their home. Whether it's giving hay to herdsmen to be able to keep their livestock alive. Um, these things are just a, a small part of what we do to show the love of Christ in a way to open up the door to be able to share the gospel. <laughs> Meeting their physical needs can open up doors um, to these families and through that we're able to share creation to Christ and then move that into them being able to hear discipleship lessons and, and finally with the end goal of, of seeing churches in some of these areas that have never, never been able to experience the gospel. Through this, we've been able to see um, herdsmen come to know Christ, to accept Him. We're able to see them being baptized in a vast wilderness. It's because of your giving through the Lottie Moon Christmas offering that we're able to go to these places. We're able to, to share the gospel with these people who've never had a chance to hear. Vicki for that, thank you for that uh, video. I pray that you'll join me this week in praying and preparing for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. What a worthy cause. Well, good morning. Good to see you all this morning. Glad, glad to be here. Uh, BJ is having stomach issues. He called a, called a stomach bug or something. So if you would, keep BJ and his family in prayer because uh, we sure am missing him. Anyway, uh, my name is JR, and I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. We have so much to be thankful for. I mean, just to be able to join together this morning in God's house, what a Thanksgiving this can be. Join me now in singing our first hymn. It's going to be 244, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. We'll sing verses 1 and 2.
Thank you so much, and we're, uh, we're going to reschedule the children's sermon, but our next hymn is hymn 249, verses 1 through 3, Come All Ye Faithful.
Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace again this morning, we simply just thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for being with our family this past week. We ask now that you bless these tithes and offerings and use them to glorify your name. Amen. Mm -hmm. and amen. Our offertory hymn today is going to be hymn 263, What Can I Give Him?
Amen. Thank you so much. If you have your Bible, if you'll turn to the book of Luke, Luke chapter number one. And we're going to take a break from our study in 2 Corinthians for about a month or so, and then we'll come back the first of the year. But I want us to look for the next few weeks about Christmas and what Christmas means and how we can celebrate Christmas. Thank you, choir, for the music and for the message about Go Tell It. You know, that's what a few minutes ago Vicki was sharing about the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. And that is something that Southern Baptists do that we do better than anybody else, in my opinion. Because we give, and we have got thousands of missionaries that we support. And so when you give, you are given to literally thousands of men and women to go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't think there's any better organization in the whole world that takes the money and shares the gospel. So I want to encourage you to, to give to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. It is a blessing to be able to give in. We've actually got one right here that used to be a missionary. So uh, we're thankful for her and Gerald and what they did on the mission field. If you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse number 30. And I think I just gave her one verse today. Now, I'm going to be looking at several uh, passages of Scripture. And they're, some are a little bit lengthy, so I'm just going to read one verse. And then I want us to, to pray and then think about the message. Will you stand, please, for the reading of God's Word? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Father, would you speak to us this morning? Father, would you encourage us in your Word? And Father, I want to pray, especially for this, this morning, for those who may be dealing with some type of fear. God, would you speak to them? Would you encourage them through your word? In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake, amen. Well, what is fear? The angel said to Mary, fear not. This fear can be used in many ways. It can mean a reverential awe of God. It can mean to be terrified or agitated. It can mean to be troubled or to take notice. And we find these words in several stories at Christmas. The first one is when the angel came to Mary. And he said to her, fear not. I was looking yesterday and I, I couldn't believe how many types of fear there are. I mean, you've probably heard of being afraid of ants or spiders or drowning or enclosed places. I read where there's a, a table from A to Z about phobias. And I found that there's also a fear of Thanksgiving and a fear of Christmas and a fear of fear. So there's all kinds of fears that, that people face today. Well, in our passage this morning, here is Mary, and Mary is engaged to Joseph. They're not married. And all of a sudden, the angel comes to her and says, God's got a plan for your life. God's going to do something extraordinary in your life like nothing else that's ever happened. And the scripture says that the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, not flavored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And then he begins to tell her God's 
plan for her life. Can you imagine how Mary felt? Probably inadequate, deficient. How am I going to be able, first of all, to birth the Son of God? I'm not married. I'm engaged, and all of a sudden now I'm pregnant. What's my family going to say? What are my friends going to say? How am I going to handle all these things? How can I raise the Son of God? Do you think she might have felt just a little bit inadequate? Well, there's all kinds of things that we face in the world today. Some people think, well, will I ever grow up? Will I ever get married? Will I ever find somebody to love me or to, to love me again? Is it possible because I'm too short, I'm too tall, I'm too skinny, I'm too fat? I've got all these issues. Well, what did the angel say to Mary? He said to her, fear not. Fear not, Mary, because this is a God thing. There is something that has taken place that God's in control of. And I'll take care of all the inadequacies that you have. I will be there with you. And so for those of you this morning who may be facing those things in your life, understand from Mary that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can ask. God, when he speaks to you, he will encourage you in whatever he asks you to do. So that's the first fear or not. And then there's this one named Joseph. Joseph is the fiancé. You find his story in, in Matthew chapter number 1. The scripture says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was in this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Can you imagine being engaged and finding out your fiancé is pregnant? How do you deal with that? Can you imagine the things that Joseph was going through when he heard those words about Mary? Do you think he might have been just a little bit disappointed Many of us today, we get disappointed in life. Things happen to us. Well, here is Joseph. He's engaged. He finds out his fiance's pregnant. Parents, family has to deal with. Probably a good thing they didn't have Facebook back then. Because everybody in the world would have known it. But you see, here's a man... And he's got something to deal with. He's trying to decide what to do. And the scripture says that Joseph, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away without any hassle. He was just going to quietly divorce her. Not make a, a public example of her. Disappointed, but he's not, he's a godly man, so he's not going to make an issue out of it. But then God steps in. God steps into the picture. Listen to what he says. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not. Don't fear. Because this is a God thing. God has ordained what's going to take place. So Joseph, don't worry about it. 
God's got this. Isn't it wonderful to know what, whatever we are going through that we'll never be disappointed with God? That God will always walk with us. He'll always encourage us. Here's Mary and here's Joseph. But God's in the midst of both of these situations. Deficient. Disappointed. But what does God say? God says, fear not. Whatever your fear is today, He says to us, fear not. Because I'm with you. The greatest thing that we can have as a child of God is to know that God is walking with us. That He is with us day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. And He encourages us. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Isn't it wonderful to, have, to know that God is there and the very promises of God are with us and we carry them with us in our hearts and in our lives and we can hear those words of God, fear not. Fear not. The third situation that you find in this Christmas story and that's the shepherds. Here the, the shepherds are minding their own business. They're, they're tending the sheep. And something happens with these shepherds. The scripture says that when this takes place, that God does something in their lives. They, they look at the Son of God. And the Scripture says all of a sudden there is this sound, there is this light. And they're astonished. They're afraid. Can, can you imagine you're out on a night and all of a sudden it's almost like it's day? Years ago when Cindy and I were in, lived in Memphis and I was in seminary, we lived in a, a not very good part of town. It was so bad there were bars on the windows. That, that's how bad it was. Well, we were in the bedroom one night and all of a sudden everything lit up. And we thought, is it the rapture? <laughs> we, we know we're good, but there was a, a helicopter and they had one of those tremendous spotlights that lights everything up. And you know, I thought about how the shepherds must have felt when they saw this great light and all of a sudden there's angels all around. And what does God say to the angels? Fear not. So what was going on with with the angels or with the, with the shepherds. I think about, when I think about them, sudden change. All of a sudden, something comes up and you've got to deal with something. Change. And most of us don't like change, do we? We just like things just like they are. But what happens when God shows up? The angel said, fear not. Don't worry about it. I was sleeping last night. I had a dream. I was driving in the truck and all of a sudden I looked down and I'm going, this isn't the right mileage on my truck. And I start looking around and I'm going, this isn't my truck. <laughs> it looked like my truck. I got in and I thought it was my truck. And then I stopped at the police department and they said, well, you're lucky that you didn't get arrested because you're not driving your own truck. And I'm thinking, what in the world's going on? And I thought about this sudden change or sudden thing about being in a situation that you don't have any idea and you don't have any control over. 
I know it was a dream, but it was real when I woke up. Here's the shepherds. And they're having to deal with something they've never experienced before. But yet the angel says to them, fear not. It's going to be okay. I'm going to be with you. And what do they do? They come and see Mary, Joseph, and the baby. And they go and tell the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fear not. And then there's another character that we find in this Christmas story. His name is Zacharias. He's old. He'd been praying that God would do something in his life. Praying about a child. He's old and he is in the temple. He is doing his duty as the priest. And all of a sudden, this angel comes and he says to him, your prayers have been answered. You're going to be a dad. Well, how does Zechariah respond? He didn't believe him. He thought the angel was nuts. Because he was well stricken in age, the Bible says. And so was his wife. It couldn't happen. But what did the angel say? Fear not. Fear not. Now he paid a price because he couldn't talk for a while. But the thing is, in each of these situations, an angel comes to each of these individuals and says to them, fear not. God's in control of everything that is taking place because the son that he would have would be named John the Baptist. He would be the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joseph and Mary were to be Jesus' earthly mom and dad. The shepherds. God had a plan in everything that was going on. Have you ever thought that maybe whatever you're going through, that God has allowed the circumstances that you and I are in to teach us to walk with God? When he says to us, fear not, could it be that he's trying to help us to understand his ways in a way we've never understood before? Let me give you four quick things very quickly that happen in these individuals, how they dealt with their fear. The first one is this. Mary surrendered to God. She said, be it unto me. In other words, Lord... Your will be done. I surrender to whatever you want me to do. That's a wonderful way to deal with fear. God, you just show me what to do. I'm going to surrender to your will. Here's Joseph. What does Joseph do? Joseph hears the words of the angel. And what does he do? He takes Mary to be his wife. He believes. He believes what God has said to him. Fear not, Joseph. This is a God thing. So how did he respond? Mary surrendered. He believed. He believed. The shepherds, when they were told to fear not, 
What did they do? They obeyed. They listened to the voice of God. There's times in our lives when God says to us, this is what I want you to do. And we need to listen to that still, small voice of God. Obey. Obey. It's one of the greatest things we can do in response to what God says to us. Is to obey Him. And Zechariah. What did he learn from this? He learned to trust not only in prayer, but in what God said he would do. Zechariah, you're going to have a son. It's going to be John the Baptist. And he's going to prepare the way of the Lord. The only thing you have to do is trust. Isn't it amazing what God says to us? Whatever fear we may encounter, these four things. Surrender, believe, obey, and trust. And you can walk through those fears. And I can walk through those fears if I will listen to the very voice of God. Fear not. Isn't it wonderful to know that he's with us and that he walks with us every day of our life. Whatever decision, whatever you're going through right now, trust him. When he says to you, fear not. I'm going to walk with you. And he will do that. In just a moment, we're going to have the invitation hymn. And there may be a decision that you need to make tonight, and God's been speaking to you, but you've been afraid to make that decision. You, you've wondered, well, what's going to happen if I make this decision? What will people say? How will I do this? How? Folks, it doesn't matter what people say. If God tells you to do something, you need to listen to him. That's the lesson we hear from Christmas here. Fear not. I'm with you. I'll walk with you. And maybe you're here today, you've never trusted him as your Lord and Savior. I want to say to you that today, fear not. He walks with you. He'll walk with you every day of your life. We've got folks all over here who can testify that. He will walk with you. He will encourage you whatever you're going through. He will do that. There might be other decisions that you need to make. Maybe you believe this is where God have you to, to serve and you like to become a member of our church. We, we'd love to have you. Fear not. Fear not. In just a moment, we're going to have an invitation to him. And I'm going to ask you if you, there are decisions that you need to make that you'll come and you'll make those decisions for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you'll stand together, we'll pray, and then we'll sing our invitation hymn. Father, thank you so much for this day. And Father, for the privilege of being in your house. And Lord, for these four short stories of those who encountered God. They encountered the living God. And you told them to fear not. Lord, there are people here this morning who've got all kind of fears. And Father, I pray today that they would take those fears and place them on the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that you will encourage them and that you will walk with them. We ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of invitation today is Jesus, I Come.
me share just a couple of announcements with you. Uh, first of all, this is a note from the family of Glenn Moss. Dear church family, cannot thank you enough for your prayers, cards, uh, texts, and especially your love during Glenn's illness and homegoing. Uh, knowing you were there for us is a blessing from God that he will take care of us. Love each and every one of you, and that's from Vicki and her family. And then this is an uh, announcement for uh, WMU. will be helping three families with Christmas this year. If you'd like to help, if you'll see Linda or Phyllis. And then an international mission study will be taught by Gail Swanson at Pennsylvania Baptist Association on this coming Tuesday at 3 p.m. And then also, don't forget the Christmas cards. We'll be delivering them the 5th, 12th, and 19th. And the deadline is the 19th. And then if you will, uh, pray for uh, Diane Colley, uh, surgery on Tuesday, please. And also for the family of, I don't know who wrote this, I don't, is it the family of Billy S Sleeper, is that it? Okay, because there's a family of down here, that's why I was asking. <laughs> Okay, so remember Billy Sleeper. Okay, all right. Anybody else before we pray? I'm sorry. Uh, Dan Davis and Carol Higgins. Family of. Thank you. Judy tomorrow, she's having surgery tomorrow. Okay, so remember Judy tomorrow. Anybody else? One. I didn't hear you. Okay. All right. Faith, okay. Remember them, that family. 